Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So at the outset, my sincere thanks to Dr. Sharma for this opportunity. So I will be talking about this management of corneal perforations in severe acute chemical and thermal injuries. So at the outset, uh, at the, there is no financial interest to disclose. So if we look at the pathophysiology of the severe uh, ocular surface burns, there is a destruction of the blood vessels of the sclera and limbus leading to sclerocorneal ischemia and extensive necrosis that releases uh, toxic substances from the necrotic cells, which ultimately leads to persistent corneal epithelial defects with sterile corneal ulcer and perforation and melt. So we all know that in presence of corneal perforations with diffuse scleral ischemia and thinning, conventional PK won't uh, help. So, so in this case, there is this, this perforation. So because of this paralimbal, uh, this ischemia and necrosis, this conventional PK won't help. So we have to go for a large lamellar sclerocorneal graft to enhance the tectonic support. And then a simultaneous or subsequent central full thickness PK to address the other ocular issues. So, uh, so whenever we are managing such types of cases, the primary goal of the management in these cases is to globe preservation and then ocular surface maintenance. And if it is achieved, then we can go for future reconstruction and visual rehabilitation. So both fibrin glue or cyanoacrylate glue with bandage contact lens may be used in the management of so small uh, impending or actual perforations. But this is a 10 year old boy who had firecracker injury and as soon as I removed this, uh, uh, this carbon particles, there was a frank perforation and leakage. So what I did, at that time I didn't have any sort of fibrin glue, so I did this tenon patch graft along with this congenital autograft from other eye. And this is a picture after nine months, this child is doing fine. The most common indication for amniotic membrane transplantation is ocular surface burns, that is grade three to grade six as per the Duas classification. But in presence of scleral ischemia, you can see that this scleral ischemia, there is uh, at this time, uh, this, uh, this uh, amniotic membrane transplantation won't suffice, so these patients uh, need tenonplasty. So what is tenonplasty? That is just uh, considered as a group sewing procedure where we have to take the, uh, this tenon spherical graft from the adjacent fornix and we have to attach it at the limbus and that way it facilitates congenital healing. So, but sometimes we cannot suture this because of severe uh, thinning or perforation. So then in that cases we have to modify the technique or augment the technique. So here we have to put a first amniotic membrane and then take these tenons from other sides and then put over that amniotic membrane and then put another piece of amniotic membrane over the tenons. So I'm not going to the going in details to this video. This is the patient who had uh, this injury and as, as because I could not suture this in the uh, limbus, so what I did that I put a tenon and then uh, did this, uh, this suturing of the tenons over the amniotic membrane and then put another piece of amniotic membrane. Now, this patient so, uh, just came after 30 days. So at that time, we, we would see this frank perforation in the central cornea. But this hair that in the preoperative visit, there was this frank scleral ischemia. But after this tenonplasty, this ischemic part has been taken care. So you can see this after this 30 days, there is frank perforation, but there is scleral ischemia part is now recovered. So at this visit, we did this therapeutic graft along with tarsurafi. So after 21st days of therapeutic grafting, so this uh, graft is quite well to be taken up. Then we remove, uh, release this tarsurafi. And then patient again after four months came with this persistent epithelial defect. So at this visit, we started this patient on autologous serum. And this is the picture after 12 months. So patient is now having six by 36 vision now. So we all know that this buccal mucosa by histology and pathophysiology resembles the conjunctiva and is considered a substitute for the conjunctiva in repairing sclerocorneal ulcers and males in serious chemical or thermal burns. So we can combine this uh, tenon plus two with oral buccal mucosal autografts. So however, this, uh, this buccal mucosa doesn't improve the local ischemia of the sclera or limbus following chemical burns and so should be combined with tenon plus two. And tenon plus two, as I mentioned, that it improves the micro environment and microcirculation and oral MMG provides tectonic support, also uh, gives a lot of sales for repair and re-epithelialization. So this is the patient, 40 years old man who had thermal injury, who came, who was treated in the steel plant hospitals and came after four weeks, the other eye became thysical. So you can see that almost 80% thinning with this uh, scleral ischemia. 
So in this patients, if I thought initially to go for a banana graft, but then I thought that this ischemic part cannot be taken care. So what I did that, I did this uh, tenonplasty in this area and then put a, uh, that means this, uh, this buccal mucosal graft in the uh, corneal part. So this is the picture after one year. So this patient is now enjoying this at least six by 20 per vision now. So tenonplasty sometimes can be covered with uh, uh, this, uh, buccal mucosal grafts. This patient had this uh, central perforation after chemical injury. So initially I did this tenonplasty along with this um, MMG, but there was, uh, the, at this visit there was this ischemic part is still not getting better. So what I did that again, I repeated this, uh, this MMG and this patient, this simple frozen is released and this MMG part that has been covered, taken care and then that is covered by this Fibro, this big fibrovascular mass over the central cornea. So now this patient is waiting for PK. So you have to address this cranial exposure if there is some of this, uh, this in thermal injuries. So this patient initially did this tenonplasty with uh, MMG, and then our oculoplasty colleagues did this cutler beard procedures. After that, this patient again had this uh, this simlepharon. So what I did this, I did I released the simlepharon and then I put this congenital autograft. And then this patient has still now has not getting good visions. So this patient again, I did this uh, this optical PK. Now this is the picture. Just just I did this last week only. This is the man who had this uh, uh, this uh, patient had this thermal injury, and again I did this tenonplasty with AMG. So there was a large epithelial defect. So I put this uh, autologous serum and this is this become better. So this patients after six months had a, uh, that means this ischemic part is uh, restored and then patient after two years now maintaining six by 24 vision now. But one should remember that if there is a frank perforation, then here as like in this cleral, uh, that means melt because of you can see this, this uveal tissues. So here this tenonplasty won't help. So here this patient needs cleral patch graft. So this is the patient who I did this uh, scleral patch graft along with this congenital autograft from the superior side. And this is the picture after one day. And after th uh, three weeks, after two months, this patch graft was all taken up and this patient is containing good vision six by six after even after one year. So these patients need close follow-up after the initial injury for management of possible sequelae. Corneal ulceration or perforation, for, uh, you have to look for that. Corneal scarring and limbal stem cell deficiency. These patients may have secondary open angle glaucoma or congenital scarring with simlepharon. All these patients may get uh, this dry eye problem, exposure due to lead malposition or from cicatricial changes, all these things to be addressed. And to conclude, proper management in the acute stage is most important and that determines the long-term outcome. When the globe integrity is saved and ocular surface is stable, one can plan further surgeries for better visual rehabilitation. And based on laterality and severity, there are many options out there. <coughs> and in these patients, the glaucoma is the most common comorbidity and it needs to be aggressively. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tuhin. Those are very difficult.